Ooh, it's stuck in my tooth. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all been having a good week. So sorry for the hiatus since my last vlog. I say sorry like lots of you care. I mean, some of you might care, which would be really nice. But um, anyway, apologies. I've just been really busy lately, so I've been cracking on with other stuff. But I thought it would be a cool idea this week to have a chatty video about how I got started in blogging. Today's video is kind of inspired off the back of finishing this book called The Multi-Hyphen Hyphen Method written by Emma Gannon and this book is designed to inspire people to work less, create more and design a career that works for you. So those of you who aren't familiar with Emma, she is an author and she's also a host of her own podcast show called Control Alt Delete and this is all about um, growing up online in the digital age with social media and also her guests that come on weekly also discuss their experiences with this too. So yeah, I thought it would be a good place to start. So let's get into the video. So I guess firstly, what um, I love about blogging is it enables me to have a creative outlet to, I guess, journal all my experiences, my hobbies and my interests, and also to communicate that with a wider audience as well. I guess I'm just fortunate in the sense that I am able to travel to different places and you know eat at nice restaurants and just generally have a good old time and lucky that people seem to respond and enjoy watching or reading that type of content as well. So so how I got into blogging, I'm gonna have to throw it way back to when I was at university. And I remember it was like our second year, so I was studying a fashion journalism course, and our lecturers had given us the task to kind of set up a blog and maintain it during our time at uni. And I have to admit, the task was, it seems really simple. Oh yeah, I just write about fashion and you know, trends and clothes and stuff, but actually, so I kind of was, you know, a bit baffled as to what I could uh, write about at the time. Funnily enough, even though I was on a fashion journalism course, like clothing wasn't the, the first thing that popped into my head when I thought I want to start a blog. But I actually had a real interest in kind of beauty products. Plaid, I could still do now, I guess. So yeah, I kind of opted for that instead. I can't remember the name of the blog. I want to say like Brilliant Beauty. Brilliant Brunette Beauty. Anyway, well, luckily I can't remember because it would be awful if you guys somehow found out the name of it. I guess I wrote about four or five blogs for, for that um, before it kind of fizzled out. I think that was because it wasn't something that I was really passionate about. So it kind of felt a bit more like a chore rather than something that I actually enjoyed as a hobby. Quickly dissipated. But when I left university, uh, I was planning on living in Sydney for a few months. And during that time, I was studying like an online course in nutrition. Obviously being in Sydney was surrounded by people that were really into health and wellness. So I decided to kind of have another shot at uh, blogging and I guess that's where I created Stripped. So at the time, uh, my blog, which is now called Stripped, was called Stripped Back Living and it was a blog about health, well-being, but stripping it back away from fad diets and, you know, just providing really nutritious recipes that were easy to follow and that were going to make you feel great. So. Starting that um, kind of complemented what I was doing in my online course at the time. With that, I also started an Instagram handle. And yeah, I think people just really responded to the content I was posting. I was posting recipes quite regularly and, um, you know, getting you know, nice comments on Instagram, like feeding back about the recipes and how delicious they were. And I guess that's when I started to feel like I had a sense of importance and that people were listening to what I was saying and that they were interested in it as well. Yeah, the, the blog kind of quite organically grew from there and I'd say I, I continued to write about nutrition and wellness for about two years but obviously like in your early 20s your tastes and habits change and I think it kind of got to a point where I was thinking about how I could expand in, in what I was writing and I'd always had a real interest in going to different restaurants and travel, so I wanted to kind of rebrand the blog uh, to kind of fit with this as well. So I changed my logo, I cut down the name to call it Stripped instead of Stripped Back Living. But yeah, I started to focus more on getting involved in the local events that were happening in the city, which was Exeter at the time, which is where I was living, and yeah, making more of an effort 
to cover like reviews about local cafes, B&Bs, and also I moved to Bristol quite soon after that, so ever since been spoiled for choice in terms of things and content to, to write about because there's so much going on uh, in a city like Bristol. So actually I think the shift was the right shift for me and my followers at the time, I think, you know, were quite happy to kind of follow me along with that journey as well. Metamorphosis, should I say. Yeah, I, I've been writing about the same sort of content ever since. I also started getting in touch with local b and when they're local, so sort of Somerset, Bristol, Southwest area, to see if I could try and collaborate with independent B&B owners to write reviews about um, their accommodation and obviously create content for my uh, social media as well. So that literally has led me to where I am today with the blog. Um, and I think now that I'm comfortable in what I'm writing about and I've really found my niche and my interest, I said it now it doesn't feel like a chore. I actually really enjoy the things that I write about and create content about. And uh, I'm very honest about the things that I like as well, which I think is really important. If you are looking to start a blog, I would definitely say make sure you find your niche and passionate or interested about the things that you're writing about because if you want to be doing it a lot, you don't want to get bored. Um, so yeah, top tip number one. So social media has been a massive factor in helping market my blog and would say it's definitely a crucial element to, I guess, um, having a presence online because a blog is not something that you're necessarily going to update every day but social media is definitely something that you can kind of fit into your daily routine. So like I said, I started my social media handle when I first started Stripped and for me it just acts as a portfolio of what I get up to in a more visual sense. It's also been a brilliant networking tool so usually I would say about 80% of the businesses or brands that I collaborate with I get in touch via social media. I do kind of do, you know, introduce myself via email but definitely through Instagram it is more of a, a media way of them seeing your work and the content that you've produced in the past, getting more of a feel of your personality as well. I've also used it to kind of connect with other bloggers and other creators in the city or for people that are going to be interested in the same things as I am and I've made some actually really lovely friends off the back of that which I probably would have thought was a bit weird a couple of years ago but now for me it just seems quite natural so yeah I would definitely uh, credit social media particularly Instagram for, for helping me meet those lovely people. Lastly it's helped me I guess get more opportunity it's helped me connect with local PR and media and off the back of that I guess you get invited to more events create more content and you just get more people seeing what you do and um, knowing about you so I would definitely say social media is key in kind of creating your own blog or side project I probably post or try and post on Instagram once a day if not once every other day it can be a bit overwhelming obviously if you're working nine to five like I am but I think once you get in the swing of things it's it's not too bad I would definitely say though if, if you really can't manage getting one post up a day don't worry about kind of making it a bit more infrequent as long as the, the, the quality of the content is good I don't think it will hinder you in a sense what you don't want to be doing is posting like three times a day and it just being you know shit and you know you're almost losing followers because it's just adding to the time to kind of think about what you're posting but yeah I wouldn't worry if, if you can't necessarily get something up every day like I said I know that I don't always manage to so I guess quality over quantity so obviously if you're working full-time or you know even if you're working part-time or if you've got kids it is hard to kind of invest to set aside uh, a moment or where you can invest into starting a, a project or maintaining a project and I would say for me the only way I can kind of advise how to do this is just by making it part of your regular routine so for me I set aside a couple of hours maybe midweek and a couple of hours at the weekend to ruffle together the content for my blog or you know film a blog and get all that together and put it on YouTube having that kind of mental timeline in my head really helps me to focus and get it done I think you struggle when you just kind of do it ad hoc you know you don't kind of regularly invest into it but like I said I work nine to five and I can still manage to fit it in and I think that just generally comes back to having something that you're really interested in and really want to be 
creative with and share with people and um, as long as you aren't finding it a chore you know you will make the time to kind of fit that in i would say start with small chunks you know you can work up to to more if that fits in with your schedule if it's something you enjoy the reward pays off in the end so basically make time so lastly i want to i feel like i've been talking for ages i want to talk about influence marketing i know that the term has got a bit of a bad rep in the press over the last few weeks or you know some people just don't like calling themselves an influencer i, I don't i wouldn't say i call myself an influencer but i think but i think others would perhaps see me as that but then i don't know am i blowing my own trumpet i don't know but yeah i can see why you know you get a lot of celebrities out there and uh, you know massive influencers that are sent a product take a picture with it because they're being paid and then won't use it again so i can definitely see why people are starting to see through influencer marketing or it's giving it a bad rep but then on the other scale there are a lot of micro influencers so people that do have a, a good following or people that are generally interested in what they're posting that work with brands because they genuinely like them and they're being honest and you know their ethos of their business fits into the ethos of their blog yes they may be uh, gifted some free items or a, you know gifted a free meal or drinks or whatever they're doing it because they genuinely like the brand that they're working with so in that sense i don't think it's as much of a problem and i would definitely say you know without connecting with other local brands and businesses in the past for my blog i wouldn't have been able to create half the content that i have i think as long as you're just really honest about this then people won't see through it think that you're being that you're not being genuine it's when you know you see these influencers with like hundreds of thousands of followers and like each post is a post promoting a different slim tea or like another clothing brand yeah it just gets a little bit fake so yeah i can say that there's definitely a bad or negative connotation to influencer marketing but i'm also guilty of saying that i have and i do work with brands to kind of promote them in a sense through my following but i'm just a lot more honest and upfront about it so i would say if you are kind of looking to reach out to businesses and brands make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and not just to kind of gain followers yeah people will appreciate you and respect you a lot more for that so thank you for bearing with me and making it to the end of this vlog if you have high five that's because i know i can drone on so i hope that's been useful for you if you are looking to create a blog or you know start a side project or just kind of invest a little bit more time for yourself to, to take up some other hobbies but if what i have been talking about today has interested you then i would definitely give emma's book a read you can get it from more stones or amazon or i'm not sure most popular bookshop yeah for those of you that are interested definitely worth a read so thank you for watching and i'll see you soon